All right. Page 14, and it's almost done already. And once you get past the, uh, the tough stuff, there's my labyrinth <laughs> shot. <laughs> it's very difficult. All right. My running frog. Just while I was chatting last night, I did this overhead shot and introducing the card guards, which let me show you what it looks like without the um, pencil layer on there. I still feel as if I need um, some kind of establishing shot that's going to show the courtyard. We've shown where they are kind of in the macro, but we want to get in and show this courtyard where she's where this discussion is going to take place um, with the Queen Librarian. And I'm going to be on the next page, I guess. started drawing this middle panel and I realized I wasn't following the pencils very closely because the pencils are a bit off. They're a bit wrong. I think it's because I squeezed the figure in. I don't like that line. Hold on. He's wearing a footman's uniform. There we go. Deceptively simple, right? And the truth is, we don't need much. Let me take the pencil back out. We don't need, need much when we're doing this stuff to get, you know, To get where we're going. I want to show him as being a little <laughs> sweaty from his run, you know, from his run through the labyrinth here. Another thing that I don't have yet, and I need to uh, figure out is the exact dialogue. Like I have an idea of what's the dialogue in each um, panel, but I don't actually have the exact dialogue. So I have to figure that out too. Um, let me come as a surprise to some of you. Actually, if you've done anything with me before, probably not too much of a surprise. Um, but I don't work with a script. I have a, um, I have sort of an idea of the whole story, and then I start to break it down into this has to happen before that happened. But as far as like an actual written out script with, you know, each dialogue box and panel directions, I actually don't, don't do that. Um, and the reason is because it's usually wrong. Your, you know, your estimates for how you're going to panel something are often, or my estimates rather, when I say you, I'm talking about me, my estimates are often wrong. And everybody's like, you know, that's the wrong way to do it. It's very inefficient. And I agree. And it is. And I only do about 150 pages a year, so um, maybe I could do more if I figured this stuff out. But really, I'm joking and I'm saying, you know, my system works for me. Your, your system, <laughs> you know, your system may be good for you. Okay, now I've got an idea that it's kind of a, um, a hatched texture. That's actually looking pretty good. You can see I've got a little bit of her. I've done.
Cufflinks. Cufflinks. Now, one of the things I am slightly worried about is having enough room on the panel to put my dialogue. That's the tough part. We don't know what we're saying. We don't know how much room we need. So it could be that we end up shrinking some of these panels down or even redrawing them, which would be a catastrophe. Well, it wouldn't be a catastrophe. It would certainly not be efficient, though. It's like a padded line, fuck that. All right, let's get in some of that texture. I'm going to put it on this layer four. Uh, that way, in case we have to erase some of it, <laughs> it'll be okay. All right. Um, I think there's some problems here. Look at that. All right. Let's get back to layer four. All right, big things are happening. All right, now for the rest of it, we're going to do the hatching this way. Is a there we go. It's meant to show some texture in the cloth. I'm not sure I'm doing it a lot of justice here. Wait, and we're trying. All right, here we go. And that way we can show the, see how the arm is going a different direction, like the hatching is going that way. And then just a matter of cleaning it up a little bit. All right, I think we got it here. It's a time to start thinking about the text, probably. <laughs> All right. Now, as for her, this is actually foreground, even though it's at the top of the page. Like, we think of foreground as being down here at the bottom. But when you use a curtain or something like that, it's still foreground. It's...
We can even do that. There we go. When I was drawing this, the um, thing that was in my mind was Maxfield Parish. He had a lot of these sort of romantic looking paintings. With amazing architecture and stuff. I'm wondering if I should even black this curtain out. I could do like a next one. I'm in the regular ink section. Once we get Brillig back into human form, you know he's got to flirt with the librarian. I think that's inevitable, right? My original designs for her, I had a like a um, some glasses for her and I might still put her in glasses maybe she's taking them off temporarily Another element of her costume that I took out was I had a big bow in the back and I've taken that back out as well. Oh. I don't know a lot about dresses or, you know, obviously you can look up reference. I didn't look up a lot of reference for her. I tried to go from my memory of what these dresses look like. Should there be a belt? Something like that? A rugged belt? Okay. The purpose of the dress isn't to look you know how they do Halloween costumes and you get like no matter what it is you know black cat pumpkin nurse you get slutty black cat slutty pumpkin <laughs> slutty nurse so with princess here I did not want to or queen librarian I did not want to make you know to appeal to that, the prurient interest. That's not our character. I mean, I might go that direction with my Cheshire Cat character, but probably not. I was thinking a lot like Tigra from the Avengers back in the eighties when I was when I was reading it. All right, we're going somewhere. We're missing all the hatching, which I don't know. Maybe. Okay. 
This is feathering. Oh, come on, that was a little bit off. Thinking is hard, y'all. Okay. You know, they were. Gloves the same way. I'm avoiding her face. You know, the more lights you put on the face, the weirder and older she looks. Look, there's my screen telling. All right, let's see. Drawing hair is always a challenge for me. I was looking at this one YouTuber, and he had this thing where he did just a He had a sketchbook that he was reviewing, and in it he did um, just hairstyles, like it was that was all it was. I thought that was a cool idea. It's one of my least favorite things to draw. From what I understand. You basically just have sections of hair, like that's a section, and then you can kind of shade the section a little bit, so you can do some hatching on the section. So I got enough black on this page. I don't. I don't really feel that I do. I feel like I'm missing something. Biggest section is here. And this looks a little uneven. Let's fix that. What? What is it doing? Why did it do that? There it is. whatever all right I want a nice chunky confident solid section of black ink that's what it's all about there we go Okay, we're probably okay here. Oh, that's a... Uh... Without making it look or feel too, you know, I 
looking for the word fetishy. You know, you want to get the oops. We could do something with our crown. Let me okay, let me put it back into level layer four for a second. What if we did our crown? like that does that hurt it I don't know if it does I think it's fine actually you can even put This is all looking good. Okay, this white space up here. Um, he's got a dialogue box that's going to cover most of that up. But I still can't help but think... Um, We should have some of these. And there's some lines here. And then, um, so it's just kind of a matter of. She might have like one line. She might, I think she's just going to say, what news do you have of the Jub Jub's approach? And you're like, what's a Jub Jub? And then it unfolds the, like the story that's about to take place. Like we figure out, okay, why did they capture him? What's going on? What are the plans for Brillig on the previous page? This is looking like a done page, as long as I get the, the um, dialogue in there. All right, so let's get some dialogue in here. Let's, we're going to, I'm going to fold layer four and F5. I mean, layer four and Inky, and then we're going to make new layer four. is going to be bubbles. First speech bubbles. And then we're going to add some text. First text will be here. Uh, soon on the outskirts of the lab, the library labyrinth. Let's see. Let's see. Soon on the outskirts of the library, the lost library labyrinth. Say that three times fast. There we go. Regular. I like to put things into 14 point text. I'm going to try and do. here how about something like that and then for the bubbles the reason I'm putting it up here uh, I've got he's got a line and then so it's gonna have to go here and then he's got a line
So we're doing a kind of a breakout box. Gotta make sure it all connects up. There's a hole. Okay. I also know we can't go with very long lines here, so <laughs> his line is gonna be something like you must alert the queen librarian at once. Okay. Let's get that going. Too big? Still too big. All right. Now we have a problem here. I think I have to shrink this down. One of my options is to shrink this whole panel down. Let's say I take layer one, because he's got plenty of room here. Here, and then, um, Or is it inky? Here, hold up, hold up. Freehand. Take this and just sort of. We've created an inadvertent tangent over here, but we can fix that. Okay, boom. No longer a tangent. Okay, now we can take this. Um, layer one. And we're actually going to stretch it. So we're going to stretch it, stretch it to about there. And then we're going to take um rectangle oh, i didn't get the rectangle we're going to move all this down here there we go so we managed to do that without distorting anything all right let's get the bubble in Um, first of all, although you can't read it because of my, my ink, um, I want to take the Queen Librarian and make it bold. Actually, you know what? I can use this line. we go. Lettering is always a challenge. It's, it's, it is definitely my worst <laughs> skill. 
out of many. Um, and I don't use any particular special tool for it. Okay, what's he going to be saying? He's got to say... He's talking about this, uh, <laughs> bring up this thing about a prophecy about a, um, a champion. So they've, remember, they've captured Relic here on the previous page. So I got to figure out what his line is. You must alert the Queen Librarian at once. He will say something like, if the prophecy is true. Oh, he's gone. What is he going to say? Well, we got to figure it out. It's it's looking good, though. All right, let's give him his line. All right. Come on now, edit text. If the prophecy. This could be our champion. Our chameleon champion. This could be our champion. But he has to have a funny. Part of the line after this, although he doesn't look like much. He's going to say something like that, kind of insulting. It's going to be funny. All right, here we go. Regular, 14. No, we're going to say this outsider. So the prophecy is about an outsider. Oh no, another rock guitarist has died. Uh, all right. Put this one in, and then we'll move on. By the way, I'm in the right place. Sausage cheese and egg. Thank you. There we go. All right, we're going to call that. We're going to call that a video for now, and I'll have the rest of this lettered very soon. All right. Please like, follow, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more, because I don't even have the next page even drawn up yet. <laughs> so... It'll be happening soon. All right.